standing out here in a huge flame. I knew the firemen were going up there because there's a fire, fire hydrant on that next street right there. I've uh, been retired for a number of years now, but uh, <clears throat> when, when I saw that explode, I said, man, man. You have to be positive. Yeah. Uh, negative folks are having a problem right now. We've been standing guard for Joey and for Bucky. We've got about 12 hour shifts. We rotate every 15 minutes. Anywhere the body or remains go, we have to follow. And it's very difficult just to keep your composure. You got, you got thrown right now uh, by, I was thinking there might be something to do with the, I don't know, she didn't know, but. Where the cartel goes. Yeah, but they, they, they told her they were going to cut her into little pieces. They're pretty much the ones pushing the dope across the border or pushing the people back to Mexico, tied up, you know, in a trunk somewhere or. They're, they're the ones pretty much engaging in all the pursuits locally. If the TCBs or the Bayucos or the Po Boys get an opportunity with a with a with a cartel, I mean they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it. There's there's no answers or buts about it. They're gonna they're gonna get the offering and and start working for them, regardless of what the what 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 the job description might be. You know, going up on the curb. Here we have the element of surprise on our side. A nod gives the green light. Police with a warrant, open the door! The team immediately pours into the practice house. Every corner is checked twice. I'm with you, go, 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 go. I'm with you. In only a few seconds, clear right. the whole house is clear. Room's clear. Mission accomplished. SRT coming out. SRT coming out. Hold me here. Same discipline, accuracy, and speed apply. You reload on the move. On the shooting range. All right, gentlemen, here we go. Commencing the exercise. Online. Right. Move. 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 Right. Two and a half miles later, the chase comes to an end. Police say the driver knew he couldn't outrun the chopper, so he pulled over without incident. Once questioned, police say the driver's story didn't match what the passengers in the car were saying. Just before 6 this evening, Border Patrol units spotted and then caught up with 11 illegal immigrants trying to cross over into the U.S. They were caught south of beneath us, where the border wall straddles military highway. When we were there, a DPS chopper was still on the hunt for two illegals who Border Patrol officials say escaped. To deter others, we set out to show you the dangers. This one is going north. Border Patrol agents guided our way. Put your step to the hole. They're our safety net. Yes, I could see the opening already. Immediately, danger starts to bite. Oh, there's a lot of mosquitoes right there. Brush nearly consumes a body. If I was doing the real smuggler act, I would have been going through there really fast. I don't care who stays back or not. The only sign we leave is the temporary trail of broken grass. There's actually been uh, people found dead really close to the to main roads. Okay, they don't know the area. They could be paralleling the, the road the whole time, and they just didn't know. We know others were here before. They put their trust on, on the smuggler, and the smuggler doesn't care about them. They care about the money. We did see a lady sitting underneath that car, the car that's on the bottom. She happened to look at us. Her face was kind of bloody. And uh, then we came back just to see, make sure everybody was called, the ambulance, the police, Channel 5 News. So we, you know, it was a pretty scary scene. Hope, you know, pray for all those involved. I right away called 911 and like all the firefighters started to come and no one knows who caused the fire or like what happened and 
you know, they had broken into that house a couple of times, so it's no surprise that probably somebody set it on fire. Helping Iraqis help themselves. That's the mission of the 4th Civil Affairs Group. But in order to do that, the Iraqis need a strong foundation on which to build a stable nation. The Washington, D.C.-based 4th CAG is helping to lay that foundation by reaching out to Iraqi children. One way they're doing this is by passing out school supplies donated by charities in the U.S. We're getting an amazing response from the states. A lot of people want to send stuff for the kids. Uh, so this kind of stuff, you know, when they do that and uh, are very generous, then we can pass these out to the kids. And it really helps us to make, build relationships with the community. Um, and really, we're reaching out to the future of Iraq. With the help of translators, Marines handed out plastic bags containing notebooks, pencils, and other school supplies to children in an elementary school in a sandy village near Camp Fallujah. Marines from 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines are joining up with the Marines from 2nd Tanks to learn how to work together. In an exercise known as tank integration, infantrymen cover a tank's rear and sides, providing protection from small, but potentially deadly threats. When it comes to security for tanks, we come to intersections, and a tank has limited visibility when it comes to uh, coming up to a corner. So what we do is we punch out about maybe 50 to 100 meters out, provide security for the intersection, look, make sure there's nobody there, no RPGs, no IEDs. In a fight, tank and infantry units benefit each other. Uh, the role of infantry is basically uh, putting the tanks in a position where they can effectively use their, their weapons in, in a fight, uh, basically prosecute uh, long-range targets. Putting the M1A1 Abrams tanks into the fight provides a considerable advantage and an added boost to marine firepower. So protecting them is vital to keeping them in the fight. Uh, the, the Abrams is an effective fighting vehicle and uh, it, it's it's working wonders uh, in the cities and uh, being able to uh, bring a platform out there to punch up in the teeth of the enemy forces and effectively bring fires onto them. Tank integration is only a small part of the training infantrymen and tank crewmen must go through to become combat ready. From Camp Bahria, Iraq, I'm Marine Corporal Enrique Sainz. The Marines of Lima Company, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, know that while they're deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, combat will always be a possibility. Lima Company Marines are brushing up on training that combines close quarters combat with military operations on urban terrain or mount training. Advanced urban combat prepares Marines for probable enemy contact in an urban environment. There, there's plenty of ways to clear the room. There are lots of ways. We just uh, walk through, look for all the hallways, Look for any area we need to check out and just go through the rooms, do walkthroughs and whatnot of how to clear the rooms. A lot of times, you know, they're not going to have someone telling them, hey, you need, to, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's going to be them. It's going to be, you know, the PFC or, you know, the low man on the totem pole that's going to say, hey, we need to make this decision. He's going to make the decision, say, hey, we need to go left, we need to go right. I want them, they need to move slow, you know, move smooth, and they need to, uh, you know, just use the basic fundamentals of everything going through. He was invisible to thousands, a man with no name, no home. Well, five teens did stop and take notice. They didn't know it at the time, but that brief encounter would forever change their perception of the homeless. They'd also leave a lasting mark for one man. And it started right here, under an overpass. In this article, do we put his personality? Absolutely. And what about that other idea that you guys had about a forgotten hero? How do you spell Vietnam? V I E T N A M. V I E T A M. Thank you. Huddled away in a tiny parish classroom. What about the fact that everybody would pass by and not notice him? Pencil scribbles spell out the untold story of homelessness on the streets of Raymondville. That's why we decided our poem to be about Raymondville. That's why it's like, I am Raymondville. Because not the whole time, but most of it is in poverty. Ralia, Selena, Jose, Rosa, and Carla. Five students turned journalists writing about a stranger turned friend. I think that's y'all's best. Gregory Landfer, the forgotten hero of the Vietnam War. It was part of a project, a poem titled, I Am Raymondville. Each picture in the project was snapped by the young journalists. They wanted to capture poverty and despair, to freeze it in time. The raw reality of a homeless life in Raymondville shows in their art, a view of people with no place to go. 
their worldly possessions carried in a cart. So it all first started with us going taking pictures and we happened to pass by Gregory and we were scared at first. Fear quickly faded to curiosity when they met Gregory. I wanted to learn more about him and how he really was because I didn't get to meet him that well. The man behind the beard and glasses provided a chance to put a face on a persistent problem. We were trying to help him so that we were trying to um, like improve so that Im like improve their, our resources so that um, a lot of people can get out of poverty and have a normal life. Carla and her fellow journalists suffered prayer and peace. He didn't want to open up to the people. The mysterious man offered his story. It was a look at a troubled life. It included a brief enlistment in the military. Even though he was homeless, which really doesn't make a difference, he was a veteran, he was a person, and he was a child of God. He was just like all of us. The street side visit was brief. It was enough to profile Gregory and the rest of the town's poor. <laughs> Five students submitted their project. A few hours later, their hearts sank. Their new friend was dead. His body was found surrounded by the refuge of his life. It laid in the shadow of an abandoned gas station. Gregory died alone. I bet he did have a family, so I don't know why that family didn't speak out for him. Like, at least help him. An autopsy revealed the man died of natural causes. Katie Investigators also learned his name wasn't really Gregory. He was to be buried in a pauper's grave. His plain marker to read, John Doe Raymondville 323. His new family refused to accept that. And that we wanted his name, his real name, to be on his gravestone. And for him to have a proper burial, and if they find out that he really is a veteran, for him to have like a veteran burial. The students turn to George Solis. And as a justice of the peace, it's my responsibility to make sure that he's identified and that a full inquest is completed. Solis also serves as commander of the local American Legion. He adopted the kid's mission as his own. He was determined to find out if the man he pronounced dead was in fact a man who wore the uniform. It was the right thing to do to determine whether he was a veteran with honorable discharge, even if it had been a, a, a dishonorable, you know, to find out whether he was a veteran and find out more about him. It wasn't easy, so Lees could find no record of the unidentified man. He feared the story told to the students wasn't true. Determination would soon pay off. A single phone call from the Veterans Administration changed everything. It was just one day before the man's cremated remains would be buried. We couldn't have planned it to say one day, 24 hours or 30 hours before his funeral, we're going to determine that this man is somebody significant to our country. The stranger known to the people of Raymondville as Gregory was named Kent Carl Cotton. Born March 31st, 1956 in Kenosha, Wisconsin, he was a veteran during the Vietnam War. His original inquest came out as a John Doe Raymondville 323. And now we have Kent Carl Cotton, a U.S. Navy veteran, honorable discharge, uh, and, and it's just an amazing feeling. The puzzling question was finally answered. The feeling that I got after finding out who it was will be etched in my life forever. Honor our departed comrades with a 21-gun salute. Hey, five. The homeless hero finally got the burial he deserved. I know eventually it would because all of us being strong enough to be able to care about him and no one else was able to. Rosa's steadfast determination brought many from the tiny town together. The story of five kids who wouldn't give up brought them here. The kids were determined to give a homeless man his dignity. People in school would always tell us that he, he, that he wasn't a veteran, that they had, they had taken it to Arizona, and that we, we were just lying, just knowing that it was real. <laughs> I never lost hope because we knew he was a veteran because he had told us. <laughs> and I, I, I never wanted to lose hope, and we didn't. And that's why we got the burial for him. <laughs> 
work doesn't end at this grave for Ralia, Selena, Jose, Rosa, and Carla. They know stories are still to be told on the streets of Raymondville. Gregory isn't the only homeless here, and he isn't the last homeless here, but he sure is the first one we met, and that he was the one to help us want to help all of them. He could have created change, the way we think of homeless people as of today. It's not about looks, it's, a, it's about what's in, in the inside. I know he's up there smiling down at, at us for giving him his peace. And I know he's up there just looking at us and thanking us. The five teens wrote a final tribute honoring their friend. We asked Selena to read a portion of it. I am Gregory. I am quiet and lonely. I am grateful to those of you who fed me and gave me a buck or two at times when I had nothing. I am safe and free. Don't worry. I am home. Tonight, so many others still call the streets of Raymondville home. They sleep under overpasses or behind gas stations, just like Kent Carl Cotton, a man still known around these parts as Gregory. And if they want a place to stay or a warm meal, they have to find a way to Harlingen. That's 20 miles south of here. The young journalists that you just met tonight want to change all that. Apollo Sandoval, Channel 5 News at 10, Raymondville.